The Ceratosaurus observed the lowlands that made up the majority of her territory. The dry season had just begun, however, she had recently fed and was not hungry. It was not prey she was searching for, but intruders to her territory, and larger predators that could spell her death. As if on cue, one of those predators, an Allosaurus, let out an ear-piercing roar from beyond the hills. But this was not a roar of challenge, it was a roar of pain. The large predator had probably bitten off a bit more than it could chew, and got an injured fighting something like a Stegosaurus or a large sauropod. Despite the roar, the Ceratosaurus got up and started to walk towards the noise. By the sounds of it, the wound was severe, and the Allosaurus would likely die from its wounds. And if she was lucky, the Ceratosaurus would get to taste Allosaurus flesh. And if the Allosaurus still lived, well, she stood no chance against a healthy adult. But against a wounded one, well, perhaps it was time that she eliminated a threat from her territory. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the show, and today we will be examining one of my favourite dinosaurs, the Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus was a medium-sized carnivorous theropod dinosaur from the late Jurassic period, originally discovered in 1884 by Charles Marsh in the Morrison Formation. The original skeleton was nearly complete and remains the most complete skeleton of the animal till this day. Other specimens have been found across Utah and Tanzania. The estimated size of Ceratosaurus varies from estimates ranging from 5.5 meters to 8.8 meters and weighing in around 500 kilograms to 990 kilograms while standing at around 2 meters tall. The most striking feature of this animal are the horns on its head, one on the nose and one over each eye. These blunt pieces of bone were speculated to be used for hunting or battling rivals of their own species. However, they were most likely used for display to attract mates and intimidate others. Though I do like the idea of two Ceratosaurus males smashing their heads together in a fight for dominance. Ceratosaurus also had unique bony plates called osteoderms that ran along its back, unique among any theropod dinosaur. These were similar to what we see on crocodiles today, and would most likely have been used for defense. It also had rather large teeth for its size, but you don't need me to tell me what those were for. Ceratosaurus would have lived alongside some of the largest land animals ever to have lived, the sauropods, including Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, Camarasaurus, and Brontosaurus. However, Ceratosaurus wouldn't have had a hope of taking down any of these giants. Instead, probably it went after smaller species like Dryosaurus, Ornitholestes, Camptosaurus, and small members of the Stegosaur family. It also might have fed on fish, turtles, and crocodiles along the banks of rivers and lakes. It had to compete with the top predators of its age, however, those being Allosaurus and Torvosaurus. In fact, Ceratosaurus seems to have been quite a rare sight in comparison to the other predators it shared its home with, leading scientists to believe that Ceratosaurus filled a small niche in the ecosystem so that it didn't directly compete with the two super predators, sort of in the same way that leopards and cheetahs live alongside lions and hyenas, tackling different prey, but ultimately living in fear of their larger species. Ceratosaurus has got to be one of the coolest looking predatory dinosaurs out there. No other predator has horns and armor on its body, making it look something really ancient and vicious. And though it's not a top predator, it would still have been the bane of many small dinosaurs that inhabited its home. I can imagine it sticking to the more forested areas of the Jurassic, silently blending between the trees, stalking its prey, while avoiding its larger cousins. Well, that's all for today, listeners. What do you think of Ceratosaurus? Do you like him just as much as I do? Leave a comment down below on what lesser-known dinosaur species you like me to cover in the future. Until then, see ya!